the setup with APAC is is honestly pretty novel. Um, you know, they are not a foreign government. They do not have to register um, under the under FARA at the Justice Department. They 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 are not part of that. Like it is a an American five hundred one c four dark money organization, basically. Like uh, like the groups that run like judicial ads. It is it is that type of group. Um, and it you know it does create this like very odd situation where like it so obviously is representing Israel's interests in 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 uh, Congress and in Washington. And you know to your point. Rob, they are also spending a bunch of money on elections. Um, you know, this this year there's been reporting in um, Slate and Politico about how they're planning to spend APAC is going to funnel through super PACs a hundred million dollars into elections this year. Um, it's which is just a staggering sum. You know, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's equivalent to. <laughs> what the crypto lobby is talking about spending too. But, um, you know, like it is, uh, in, in what, what's really kind of interesting about it is like when they're attacking these candidates, they're not saying, um, you know, this candidate is, is, uh, anti Israel pro Palestine. They, you know, they, they turn them into, um, they, they go with whatever the sort of like polling says, like whatever the sort of like, you know, um, standard line would be against this candidate. So you just have like no idea where it's actually coming from. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it you know, it, it has a definite, um, you know, distortive impact on, on elections. Um, you know, I mean, that's the case with, uh, you know, super PACs, outside spending, dark money generally, but, um, you know, here it's, here it's really, um, it, it, it's a lot of money and, you know, it's, it's a group that isn't just, they're not just spending on elections. They're not just lobbying, they're doing both. So it's, it's real hard influence. There was a race that I was curious about uh, on Super Tuesday out of California. This is the race to replace Katie Porter. And they spent nearly $5 million, APAC did, trying to stop one Democratic hopeful, Dave Min, from advancing to the November election. Uh, His competitor who they supported, Joanna Weiss, um, there was not really, on, on paper, there was very little that separated them. Neither have called for a ceasefire. Neither are very outspoken about the war, about any attempts to resolve it. Neither have offered criticism of Israel whatsoever. Min and his campaign said in interviews they couldn't even really figure out why APAC was going after him so hard. And their best guess was that he took an endorsement from J Street, which shares a lot of the same views as APAC overall. I mean, it's like kind of the more like liberal uh, APAC. It's definitely like a, a, a an organization that took similar stances in the immediate aftermath of October 7th. But there's, I guess you could say it's, it's different. There's, there's some differences. They certainly aren't as aggressive in primaries for one uh, or in shaping legislation, but that was their best guess. That's what they could figure. That's what they mustered. Okay, maybe this is why APAC is spending $5 million to stop us. It did not work, but I think it is, uh, like you're saying, it's it's what is the attack line against him? They attacked him for getting a DUI last year because that's what Weiss had been hitting him on. Had nothing really to do with his platform or anything that they disagreed with. It's just, how do we make sure these people lose? And when you're dealing with this kind of money for a a house primary, on like for a house primary, like neither really having a lot of power if they were to win, they're just going to be a backbencher. That is such an insane amount of money relative to the potential prestige and power from that position. And that they are throwing that around is really worrisome because it does have a cancerous effect on a democratic process and free and fair elections. But that's just totally legal thanks to the Supreme Court. And for a lot of the stuff, it's it's hard to track. It's hard to trace. We don't know many times where it's coming from. It's just very, very murky and troubling in aggregate when you have a force like this throwing around such huge amounts of money to try to unseat people. Thanks for checking out The Insurgents. What you just heard was a free preview. To get access to the rest of this episode, 
head on over to insurgentspod.com where you can subscribe for as little as five bucks a month. Your support goes a long way to keeping the show going, and as a thank you, you get an extra episode every week. Insurgentspod.com to learn more.